In this video, we're going to be looking at um, a problem based on the proportion of men and women who exercise at least three days per week. Um, there's a couple of typos in the writing of the problem, so I'm just going to read it over the way it should be read. It says, which sex exercises more? A recent poll of 1,000 men revealed that 390 of them exercise at least three days per week. A similar poll of 800 women revealed that 256 of them exercise at least three days per week. Use a two and a half significant two and a half percent significance level to test the claim that the proportion of men who exercise three or more days per week is greater than the proportion of women. Okay, so I've underlined the important phrases in the problem here. It says to test the claim. Test the claim means we're dealing with a hypothesis test, and it says to test the claim that the proportion. So it's a hypothesis test about the proportion, and then finally. The phrase here that's important is greater than, so they're saying the proportion of men who exercise more than three days per week is greater than that than the proportion for women. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down that as our claim to start. So our claim is that the proportion for men who exercise at least three days per week is greater than that for women, right? So a smaller proportion of women exercise that much per week is the claim. All right, so there's HO now versus HA. And when we look at the claim, we see it has a greater than symbol, which is one of HA's symbols, so the claim becomes HA. Now from there, we're going to look at um, HO and say, well, HO has to express the opposite idea. So if this one says greater than, HO will say less than or equal to. All right, from there we're gonna get the data and write it down. So we'll use men and women here. And when you look at the data for men, it says a thousand men revealed that 390 of them exercised at least three days per week. So a poll of a thousand men revealed that 390 of them exercised at least three days per week. Then it says a similar poll of 800 women. So N is 800 for the women revealed that 256 of them exercise at least three days per week. Now, for here, for this group, we can get the p-hat for men by doing 390 over 1,000, right? X over N, and we get the answer 0.39. For the women, we're gonna have 256 over 800. And that answer turns out to be 0 0.32 if you work it out. Okay, now from there, once we have the data recorded, we'll copy down our significance level, which is 2.5% or 0 0.025, and then we'll go to our test stat formula. Because of our large sample sizes and the fact that this is a hypothesis test about the proportions, we're going to be using a Z distribution. And then from there, we'll plug in the following information. The proportion for men, or the p-hat for men, minus the sample proportion, or p-hat for women, divided by the square root of, we'll have p-hat q-hat over 1 plus, or times n, one, plus, 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. So this p-hat q-hat, those are actually the pooled estimators for these values. And then we're going to do that because we're going to be assuming that these two proportions are equal as one of the parts of HO, right? And so what we're going to do is actually come over here and calculate that as a separate detail here for the data step. So let's get the p hat value. The way we do that, we do a pooled estimator by adding the x values together and adding the n values together. And that gives us a sort of p hat, but a pooled estimator of it, right? So when we add the x's together, we're adding 390 and 256, and then we're dividing that by 1800 in this problem. So let's do that with our parentheses here in the calculator. 390 plus 256. Notice how I put it all in parentheses. Then I divide that by the sum of the n's, which is 1800. And when we're done, we get uh, basically 0.358 repeating. So 0.358 repeating. Then q hat. It's going to be 1 minus that, right? So literally 1 minus our answer from above, and we get 0 0.6411. Okay, so 0 0.641 repeating. All right, now those are the values for P and Q. I'm actually going to store those values in my calculator, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say for P, I want to store in the values 
So actually I'm going to do 0 0.35 888 and I'm going to store that in my calculator as P. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Q. This way I'm not rounding hardly at all in the problem, right? Okay, now let's take those values and plug them into our test stat formula. So our P hat is going to be 0.39 minus our other p hat, 0.32, the proportion for women. Then the square root of the p hat here is 0.358, repeating, times 0.641, repeating. Then 1 over 1,000 plus 1 over 800. OK, so that's our total test stat formula. Now let's work that out in our calculator to see what that gives us. So on the top, we'll have 0.39 minus 0.32, which of course we could have done in our head, right? And then divide that by the square root of. The square root of this is going to be our p hat times q hat. Now I stored that in my calculator, so I don't actually have to type them in. So I'm going to do alpha p times alpha q. So I've multiplied p and q, and then I'm going to do times that parentheses. The parentheses is 1 divided by 1,000 plus 1 divided by 800. Close up the parentheses and hit enter. Okay, so I end up with 3.077. So 3.077. Or 3.08 if you want to round to two decimal places. Alright, so we have our z value. The next step of a hypothesis testing procedure is to compare that z value to a critical value. So we have to draw our bell curve and locate the critical value and then calculate. Uh, or not calculate, but look up the critical value on our table. All right, so let's draw the bell curve first. Then we're going to look at HA to determine whether it's a left tail test, a right tail test, or a two tail test. The fact that this is a greater than symbol indicates that we should be dealing with a right tail test. All right, now when we look at this value here, the critical value, the critical z value, it's going to be a z.025 value because our alpha is 2.5% and that's the amount of area in that tail on the right. So if we go to our t table, look up 0 0.025 and go all the way down to the bottom where the z values are located, we will find this critical value. Now it turns out that the very common critical value is 1.960 and it comes up so often I'm going to go ahead and write it in. You can look at um, several other of the videos I've done this sort of thing and you'll be able to find that value on your table. I'm sure by now you know that value is 1.960. If you don't, of course, just look up 0 0.025 on your t table. Now from there I'm going to look at this test stat and see where it lands. 3.077 is going to land on the right and it's going to land in the rejection region. And because it lands in the rejection region we're going to decide to reject the null hypothesis. and therefore support the alternative hypothesis. And based on that, what we want to do is look back here and say, what was our claim? Was it HA or was it HO? And when I look at the claim, I see it's the same as HA. So I'm going to use this phrasing here. I'm going to say that we support the claim. So the wording is going to be the sample data, the sample data support the claim. Dot, dot, dot. And the claim, of course, is that the proportion of men who exercise at least three days a week is indeed greater than the proportion of women who exercise at least three days a week.